I'm back on the air again. Okay. <coughs> and so I just made another little video there with somebody else. And back cruising on the boardwalk. So this place here, despite the fact that it's in the tropics, never seems to be in the Typhoon Alley. The typhoons all come over the Philippines and then they will either hit Japan or they'll hit uh, Taiwan as there's one this week curving into Taiwan or sometimes they'll hit Guangzhou and Hong Kong or a little bit east of there and the odd one will go south of us and hit uh, middle of uh, Vietnam but for some strange reason they never seem to uh, be we never seem to be in their direct path here the one that went to uh, Vietnam a couple years ago we got uh, the outside of it and there were some flooding in Sanya. Sanya is pretty flat in the city, 60 kilometers uh, southwest of here, but around this area, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's some 3,000 foot mountains right in front of me, so it's hilly enough here, there's real good drainage, and uh, you don't have to worry about flooding. So that's a good part about this this particular area of Hainan. Now these mountains that are in front of us, they actually do something for the weather here because they're so there's a ridge. You see the backbone of the ridge coming up from the sea there. It goes right up to 3,000 and then it the highland just keeps going back and back and back to a five finger mountain of 6,000 feet. And that ridge on the other side of the ridge blocks a lot of cloud and weather. And so on the other side of the ridge, all the way to Haiku, the weather's different from down here. Uh, on the on this side. Hey, ni hao. Ni hao. Yeah. Uh, those people are renting a apartment for me right now. And uh, she's from Beijing, or they're from Beijing, and they come down here because their health is poor up there for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. A lot of people have uh, whether it's high blood pressure or what it is they come down here and nice weather nice good food you know the healthy food rather i'm saying referring to and uh they get themselves better this thing here you're probably wondering what the hell he's doing giant tracks on it the uh high seas when they come through here they tear the beach away and you see this boardwalk at this particular spot is almost ready to drop into the into the uh, beach so he's been yesterday I saw him out there all day and he was pulling sand out of the out of the sea now I don't know if he's putting it here because last night the piles of sand that he'd pulled out were on the beach, but this morning they're gone. Now I see some huge tire tracks on the beach there. I'm assuming that those maybe are payloader. Maybe a payloader is taking those that sand away somewhere. I don't know where because it would be have salt in it. So I don't know how they use sand with salt in it. But anyway, we're talking about the weather. Uh, on this, from these mountains here, south towards Sanya, <clears throat> the weather is better than on the other side, just because uh, 
it gets jammed up on the other side, so it's rainier over there. And in the uh, winter time, Haiku is quite a bit cooler than down this end here. You can you can get a map of the sea temperatures, and whatever the temperature in the sea is, it's gonna definitely affect the shoreline adjacent to it. So you can see that this southern portion uh, in the winter has got much higher sea temperatures than the north around Haiku and the straits between Haiku and the mainland China. And you can actually swim in the sea here all winter long. You know, no wetsuit or anything, it's just warm enough to go in the sea. The waves here are a little bit higher in the winter because you get more wind. The wind's starting about October, go till about April, and then it's calm like this all summer. But uh, that strait, it's about a 60 kilometer straight from Haiku to the mainland, and they are going to build a bridge across there. Right now there's a train, believe it or not, that goes on a ferry. The train goes backwards and forwards and breaks and goes backwards and forwards and breaks and goes backwards and forwards. It breaks into about four pieces. It's one of those old style trains where you can sleep on it. Three bunks, uh, you know, three ab above each other. And <clears throat> You can take that all the way to Guangzhou. They break that train, put it on this ferry. Ferry goes across about an hour and a half or so. And then they put the train back together again and head for Guangzhou. But they're starting to build a bridge now. And when they get that bridge built, it'll greatly increase the traffic coming down here to Hainan. Right now it's Hainan since I've been here about 15 years and in 15 years in this southern end here the traffic has greatly increased I'd say the population probably doubled on Hainan the south end everybody's got a job down here and they all come from the mainland to work in construction these are these free 13 passenger uh, vehicles that the like a taxi that the development runs around all you do is call them hey I'm at uh, H development uh, number 135 can you send the thing you know five minutes later this guy's there picks you up where do you want to go Runs you down here. I want to go to the market, get some groceries. He runs you down here. He runs you back home. It's all free. But in the wintertime, it's going to be busier, so you'd have to wait longer, of course. And uh, wouldn't be as convenient. There's a big swimming pool in the center of those buildings. Right here this is a marina. So when they built this place, when I came here about seven years ago, there was only about four buildings total here, and now there's like 700. And this was just a creek that started up there and flowed down, and it's just full of plastic bottles and garbage. They've cleaned that creek totally up and they dredged it all out. There's a mountain of sand. That's going to be a nice sort of a tropical island with lots of trees and stuff. Park in the middle, but it's not finished yet. And then they've got uh, concrete banks on the side now. There's some yachts in here already. There's some sailboats. 
and there's a nice stone breakwater so you can drive in from the sea without the waves affecting you. And there's a village here, it's probably got 1,000 to 1,500 people in it, it's called Guangpua. It's coming up on the left, but immediately on our left now is workers living accommodation here. They're stacked up uh, two levels high. And so the workers from out of town, transient guys for construction, they live in there. You feel their laundry hanging outside on the edge drying. The workers from the mainland, from the north, are actually a lot better than I hate to say it because you know you're you like to promote the local everything but what they're telling us if you're finishing a house and the guy that you're talking to about hiring to finish your house if he's hired locals you don't want to use him because the locals don't work very hard they're used to you know having an easy life here not just content with not much and so they don't work very hard especially in the heat and humidity but the uh, guys from central or northern China come down here to make money so they're harder workers so that's who you want if you're finishing your villa on the right side we just passed some there You'll see these ladies that are out here every day and they're dressed up like Muslims, but they're not Muslim. It's just because they're outside all day. Uh, they're all wrapped up in scarves to keep the sun off their face. And they keep watering this uh, stuff on the side here. One thing about this place is the, uh, the uh, groundskeepers, the, whatever you call them, the, the flowers and, and the trees and the bushes, they've done a hell of a nice job. See even in the middle here. This is all the corporation has done this. It's not the city, not the town of, Ling, of uh, Guangpu. It's all Fuliwan has done this. On the right there, there's some docks. And what Fuliwan did is they didn't want the fishing boats being a problem for the yachts and things like that. So they made them their own docks, which is right here. And so the fishing boats stay away from the Fuliwan. And it also is giving back something to the community, these fishing boats were never able to work out of Guangpo before because that creek was not good enough to let them in there but the nice thing about having these boats here is you can come down here about 10 a.m. and the fishing boats are all coming back with their catch and uh, you buy it right off the boat. You get on the boat and you, he opens his well and you look down and you say, oh, okay. Yeah, how much is this one? And he's got a scale there and he'll sell you the fish. You get it live right from the guy. And, you know, I, I know that uh, in China, it's a custom to charge foreigners more. Hey, you know, but I don't mind paying a little bit more, you know, that I can afford it. I don't feel as though I'm getting ripped off too badly, but what I've noticed is foreigners get treated better than locals in a lot of cases here. I was down looking at some fish once here and in the end really didn't know what I wanted. There's, there's some fish there. Oh, those are big ones, right? Eh? Yeah, I think those big ones there got a lot of bones in them. 
Because, because uh, now the ones they're carrying, they're not going to be bony, but those other ones are. Anyway. Oh yeah, there'll be some nice fish in there. Anyway, I didn't come here to buy fish this morning, but that other day I was here, I didn't really know what I wanted. This is about a year ago, and you don't know which fish are better. So I looked at them all, I was about to leave, <laughs> and the guy comes to me with his bag with these three big fish that I had been looking at, and he hands it to me, and I said, oh, you know, I don't need it. But he wouldn't take no for an answer. He didn't want any money, you know. <laughs> I asked him how much money he didn't want. So, <clears throat> just because you're a foreigner, you know, they want to be nice to you. So, uh, you don't see that, of course, anywhere else but, but here. So, anyway, that was kind of nice. This morning, when I was rode down here on the bike, I stopped at the beach to make another video. And there was these two local guys, not locals, but they're Chinese mainlanders, walking along the beach. And the guy asked me if he could get his picture taken with me. So I said, sure. You know, and he took his picture with me. But <clears throat> I don't know why they do that exactly. I could understand it if they said, hey, aren't you so-and-so from the NBA? And I said, yeah. And they'd say, hey, oh, can I get my picture taken with you then? But I'm not so-and-so. So I really don't know why they do that. But everywhere I go, it seems to be the same thing. Everybody wants to get their picture taken with me. So this is there's still a marina, but this is the other side. Now this is the Atour Hotel, which appears to have opened its doors. And there's cars parked out front here. There's another hotel on this side. It's called the Love Hotel. I don't know what the theme is inside. It's probably not quite like the Mexican Love Hotels with the video cameras and the mirrors on the ceiling. It's probably a more romantic thing. And uh, but this is right at the marina. And kind of a nice location. As you can see, there's nobody here yet. This is only beginning of September. So uh, they come down here in bigger, quite big numbers after, say, December and for the China New Year. Now there's some yachts there. The biggest ones are owned by the development people. And uh, on the other side, there's some sailboats, smaller ones. You can see them, just barely see them. They are part of a sailing club. They'll teach you how to sail here. And uh, these tall buildings are the final ones that will be built here, final tall ones. There will be some more at the other end. Right on the back side of this hill behind the tall buildings, there's a golf course. That golf course is not belong to Fuli Wan. And I'm not a golfer. I've never been a golfer. I've always thought that golfing was for old men who are too old to do any real exercise. So I've never golfed. But I guess some people like it. And one of those people that likes it is Yao Ming. There was another guy renting a place from me and uh, he was he had some pictures of Yao Ming. He, I think he was a golf instructor. I'm not sure. 
But anyway, he was golfing with Yao Ming down there. There's a supermarket. And uh, so Yao Ming does come down here sometimes to golf. And for those of you who don't know who Yao Ming is, he's the uh, China superstar basketball hero that uh, played for Houston. Seven foot six or something like that. And uh, he's retired now. I think he had some injuries caused kind of an early retirement. You get big guys like him, and I sort of place myself in the same category because I know what it feels like to have an injury. Our knees, when you're carrying around a hundred or more kilos and you're exercising, jumping. I was doing a lot of those box jumps last winter. And next thing you know, your, your knees are extremely sore, and you know that if you don't stop, you're going to damage something. So, basketball does that, you know, it's got so much running and pounding that uh, your longevity is very limited. So, on my left here is the town of Guangpua, and it's probably, as I said, around 1,000, 1,500. You never see a population sign. It's pretty hard to come up with those figures. I'm just guessing. But as you look around, you notice that everything here is new construction or ongoing construction. And every time I come here, I don't come here, you know, every week or every month because I work outside of China always. There's always new construction. There's a new house right there. And it's because of Fuli Wan. It's given everybody here jobs. And those who don't have jobs at Fuli Wan, they get the spin offs from the other people in town that do have the jobs and are spending their money here. So there's another big place going up. Now what they, this town was before, you know, when I came here, you see all these red bricks here, everything was made out of red brick. Every little house, was these tiny old fashioned red brick houses and they had the clay, red tile roofs, one story, you know, just like you see in the old quarter of Beijing or wherever that place is called. And, uh, but now, there's another new place on the left, the shiny windows, shiny fronts on the house. Before it was like this on the right. So this place is, uh, although it may not look that great to you, it's great to the people here. Now these little trucks that we're passing, I just love these little things. They're either uh, one cylinder or two cylinder. There's another one there. We've just passed four in the last 30 seconds. Everybody seems to have one. They're a dump truck. Some of them are one cylinders. Some of them are two cylinders. The newest ones have doors on them. The older models don't have doors. They look an awful lot like a Model T. They're diesel. And some of them even have four-wheel drive. And they'll carry a hell of a load. You see them going up steep hills inside of Fuli Wan. They either got bricks in the back or sand or gravel for making concrete. And they're just chugging up the hill at super low speed on the engine. As the engine chugs up the hill, you can count the engine revolutions that are turning around. And uh, 
So they're a really beautiful little thing. I love to have one. But you know, trying to talk to somebody, get information about one is another different story. As you can imagine, not a soul in this town speaks a word of English. Down there is an open market. Oh, oh. Hey, Nihao! Oh. Oh. Yeah, how? Uh, and uh, this is the market area of town. You get coconuts there. And uh, geese, you want to buy a goose? For sale. There's a high tech market in there. Uh, there was a guy who used to go to along here. He had a chair right here beside this brick, red brick wall. There's the chair now, still there. The guy's got there. He was about 82. He used to cut my hair. What hair I had. He charged 10 RMB. And so, 7 R. There's the guy right there. That's him. Hey! Yeah. So, 7 RMB is a dollar, so he charged me 10 for a haircut. Anyway, anywhere else in the Western world, he was $20. And uh, major traffic town here. Now, way off in the distance, you can see a hill. Green Hill. That hill actually has a little bit of significance. In 1945, in about April, the war had, was just about to end, and um, there was a Japanese garrison in this town, right where I'm riding now. So the Americans, I don't know where they launched it out of, but they launched this. Uh, PBY bomber and it had 13 crew members on it and its job was to destroy that Japanese garrison in this town. So the bomber came in on its bombing run and of course nobody knows what happened because there's nobody left to tell about it but you know the uh, the bomber hit the side of that hill straight ahead of us there. I've been to the wreckage site. All the uh, remaining parts of the aircraft have been removed. I thought I may be able to get a bomber seat out of the thing, but everything's gone. But the locals remember it. They showed me exactly where it was. So. I'm guessing, now, there's a valley there. So, because the pilot, if he had lost one engine, for example, he could have just flown, simply flown right up the valley and either landed in a rice field, which they're up that valley, or the Lingshui River is only a couple kilometers up there. Could have landed in the Lingshui River and, uh, or on the beach, which is, and, and made a successful landing, everybody would have got out, but it didn't. It, it couldn't uh, remain straight, and it turned, slow right turn, and it hit the hill. Maybe three, four, three, four hundred feet above the valley floor. So, either the pilots were, uh, incapacitated from getting hit from ground fire or the rudder on the tail and he couldn't keep it straight. I would think that even if it lost the engine on the right side and had the thrust on the left, the rudder would still be able to keep the plane straight. You know, they don't just turn right because you lose one engine. You can compensate for that. So anyway, it crashed there. And there's another one of these trucks. 
crash there, 13 guys dead. Here's a school for the small kids on the right and this bridge. show you this river here. The reason I'm going to show you the river is because this just used, last time I was here a year ago, this was a cesspool of garbage. And look at that now. It's all cleaned up. So somebody's been down there and cleaned all that plastic out of there. Just so when the people come Tourists, hey, it's the slice of heaven. Hainan is the slice of heaven for the northern people in China. I went to this development on the west end of Hainan Island, and I gotta tell you, this development looked to me like a prison camp. It had about 23 buildings, and each building is about 20 stories Hall, and each apartment was only 30 square meters. So it was 3 meters wide by 10 meters long. Everyone was the same. And so you walked in these, there's about 24 buildings. And so they're all really tall all around you. But space, a bit of space between them. And every 20 minutes, there was a bus stopping there, full of people, the big buses, you know. <clears throat> and they'd be coming from, I don't know where, there was some sort of package, I think. And the people were all from the mainland, somewhere in the north. Maybe they're from Harbin or Liaoning province or somewhere like that. And they come up there and on these package tours and then the salespeople had these uh, you know it's like a headset they wear on their head with a little boom microphone they're blasting out this information to these people as they come in the sales office and uh, and then they give them the sales pitch in front of this big model that they have on the table and then off they go with them around in these electric cars and show them the places. And the place had one tiny hot tub. And it was full of these men. You know, there's about, I don't know, 15 men in it. Tiny little hot tub. And there was no pool. And, uh... So just do the math. You got 24 buildings. And each floor is giant. Maybe they're about 20 story buildings and each floor has got a front side and a back side and so there'd be about uh, well, there had to be say 15 apartments on the front 15 on the back just do the math how many people are living in that place tiny little place and they were just buying those place like they were there was no tomorrow because in China, everybody wants, well, four things, I guess, now. I used to say three, but now it's four. First thing they want is an iPhone. With an iPhone, they've got status, you know. The second thing they want is their own apartment. And with the one-child thing now, people are affording to be able to go to university where they never could before. Get good jobs. Buy an apartment. Next thing they want is a car. But once they've got a car and they've got some money rolling in and they're starting to do well, the next thing they want is a slice of heaven. And that heaven is here, Hainan Island. And over on the right there, the other side of the right field, there's a whole bunch of uh, local houses that have sprung up in the last, well, since I've been here, they, let's just say the last five years. They were never there before. And they're quite nice houses. They're two, 
or three stories are built with blocks and bricks and, they're, and then they're they got some sort of tile on the outside so they're nice and shiny new windows they're actually quite nice and the amount of money that they spend to build these things is amazing how cheap they are